Hey y'all, welcome back to my shop. I'm James Wright and uh, we're working with hand tools here. So, I wanted to show you a project I'm about to start on. Uh, this is the leg for my coffee table. And I have a groove cut into it and I just cut that out with a chisel. And it's pretty rough. Um, I haven't had to take the time to do that yet. But the trick is I want that groove to be precisely a quarter inch deep. And right now it's just less than a quarter inch. Um, I'm going to the points on it. You can see it's pretty darn rough. I'm not going to see it in this light. Um, but how would you do that? Uh, if I was using power tools, I'd basically grab my router, I'd set the bit to a, a quarter inch deep, and I'd run it out. Um, but I don't do power tools out here. I have a router sitting upstairs, and I'm going to leave it right there. What I'm going to do is basically take a chisel, um, and I'm going to make a jig to hold it, because everything you have in a hand tool shop is a little more than a jig to hold a chisel. Uh, whether it be a hand plane, which is basically a large chisel, uh, all the way down to a saw, which has just a thousand chisels. thick um, and cut it out with a coping saw and then create a little um, uh, a little bed to hold the chisel and I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, blacksmithing. I'm uh, not real blacksmithing but I'm basically gonna take this chisel, heat it up with a propane um, torch and bend it into shape. And once it has been bent into shape um, then I can turn it into a router and this board will then hold this chisel precisely a quarter inch down or whatever depth I set it at, and uh, route that out, and then I will have a router so that I can make a depth on anything I want. Um, so yeah, that's the project we're doing. Follow along, and uh, we'll have some fun. So let's get the cutting. First thing is to get out the uh, coping saw and start going to town. And a lot of people would find this very boring, and in many ways it is. But uh, I, I actually kind of enjoy it. It is a, an art in, uh, in patience and a good way to, uh, to learn some practice. Hand skill, hand-eye coordination. Keeping the blade at 90 degrees is very important. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have a lot of work to do with a file afterwards. It's just a, a good skill to learn. And once you, you learn how to use a coping saw, you can do a lot of other things. I'm just following the line around. There's the pattern on my side. Uh, there are some points at which I did a great job and some points at which I did not. But uh, that's part of the art. I haven't had a chance to use it a whole lot. And I'm hoping to have a few more things. I've got a couple other projects coming up that I'm looking forward to using the coping saw on. But uh, this, one was, uh, this one was enjoyable. A lot of good curves and turns to, uh, to work out with it. I'd like to get a little deeper throat coping saw. Uh, this one just barely made it through, but uh, there you go. So, take the pattern off. Um, actually, before taking the pattern off, I put in a hole in the center of the, uh, the hole so that later on I could, draw, I could drill out the, uh, uh, the middle hole in the router. Went through with a series of rasps and files. Um, I have a, a nice collection of heavy rasps for taking down the, the rough edges and uh, slowly then making uh, uh, finer and finer cuts with uh, finer and finer rasps at different points. Um, it's useful to have uh, other rasps and files with different um, different curvatures and, and panels like that. Uh, you can see I'm using a very large rat tail uh, that I got at a garage sale for 10 cents, and I absolutely love that rat tail. I use it all the time. Great for all those inside corners. Uh, thankfully, there's one edge on it that's perfectly flat, and I could use a, uh, a spoke shave and a block plane and clean that out quickly. But everything else is slow and steady filing. And if anything, this is the boring part. But uh, it's good encouragement to learn the, the coping saw better because I'm going to have to uh, spend a lot more time with the coping saw in order to make these cuts cleaner in the future 
and the cleaner you make them with the coping saw, the less time you have to spend with the file. Now the edges are finally getting close to where I'd like them to be and I'm starting to be able to use the spoke shave on some of these larger corners and making it a little bit easier uh, quicker. The face, because it's flat, is a joy to work on suddenly because I can get out my number four plane and uh, clean it up and life is good. Life is always good when you can use your number four. So now it's time to drill that hole. There is a big hole in the middle and I have an adjustable um, brace bit that allows me to then cut the uh, two inch hole that is needed. This bit is, is really kind of fun to use. Um, go at it from one side until the point sticks through and then go at it from the other side. Um, the only issue I had with it um, is that I uh, was slightly off 90 degrees and so it didn't cut out completely so I can just take the chisel and uh, pop out the tiny bit that didn't go through and clean up that inside with a file and lo and behold I have a fairly perfect two inch hole now I need to make a support for the knife to go in so I need to cut out a small piece to attach pulled out that block of mahogany and knocked off a piece about an inch and a half by one inch by one inch. Planed up six sides, made it nice and smooth, shaped it just a little bit, gave it a little bit of curvature, and uh, then I can set it up and glue it to the uh, top of the router. This is just a little bit more material for the router knife to go through so that when it is secure um, it, there, there's more to attach to. Set it in place, glue it up, and I just used the uh, clamp on the bench to hold it in place as I was just going to hold it there for an hour or so. And the bench makes a fantastic clamp. Now it's time for a little of the blacksmith work. Uh, I just got out a propane torch and uh, adjusted the flame to where I'd like it to be and started working in uh, heating it up. I'm, I'm really not worrying about annealing it or hardening it because I'm going to be taking care of that more later. I, I just need to get it to the point where I can bend it into shape. So I'm heating up the tip to a red hot, I'm keeping the, the tip right on the fire. I put it in the vise and bend it to eye level of what I believe it should be and then I found out I needed to adjust a little further but by that point it had cooled off um, a bit too much so back to the fire it goes and we can continue heating that up um, as much as I found this enjoyable it just wasn't uh, all that was, I was expecting it to be also notice in the background there is a fire extinguisher on the bench and two more on the floor behind me um, always better to be safe than sorry especially around propane but once I get the shape I'm liking, I uh, heated it back up to red hot again, and then quenched it in some oil. So that would harden it up. Now here's one mistake I made. Uh, I needed to cut the shank off, uh, but I waited to cut the shank off until after I had hardened it. It would have been better to do that when it was uh, hot or annealed. Uh, but no, I decided to cut it when it was hard <laughs> and it took me forever and I went through two hacksaw blades so uh, learn from my mistake don't uh, don't cut hardened steel so now that I have the uh, the knife I need to make a hole for it um, I found that uh, starting with a number five brace bit was uh, perfect because that matched the depth of the the, the knife blade um, 
that gave me my base that I could then uh, take a chisel and shape it out. The knife blade actually ended up being thicker in the middle than it was towards the edge, and so that allowed the, the chisel to make a, a nice shape that fits it rather well. It was a bit tedious to work through, but it came out in the end. I, I kind of enjoy making these small fitting holes. They, they require a certain amount of patience and uh, focus that is not something I've had in the past. But with some practice and time and uh, the desire to learn patience, it uh, comes out really well. And you're not going to be able to make that shape of a hole with any power tool in the world. But a chisel and a hand give it five six minutes and you've got yourself a hole the next thing I need to do after doing the hole is I need to make a recess in the bottom so that the blade could go completely flush um, and so that was a fairly simple thing took the blade out and then cut that notch uh, for the blade to then slide into the body so if I needed to cut a hole that was only a sixteenth deep I could still do that Now with the uh, the blade fitting and everything running well, I need to put in two set screws in the back to keep the blade from sliding around. Uh, so I measured the thickness of the shank on my thumb screws and drilled a hole that matched that so that when I ran the thumb screws in, they would self-thread themselves into the wood. Um, I would like to get slightly shorter ones, but for right now, that's what we got. So uh, I was very, very happy with that. Now the issue I have is that the blade is hardened and I need to soften it a little bit so I can sharpen it. So um, I take this uh, oven and set it to 450 degrees, it's actually a little bit more than that. Set it in the, the oven uh, for an hour and a half and slowly bring the temperature down over the course of uh, the next hour and a half. Uh, so once that is out I have a blade that is tool hardened, um, but still soft enough I can shape it. Um, the other really cool thing is I got a blue on the top half of the shank that wasn't heated earlier. It was really, really cool. Um, that that just made my day. That was kind of a, something I wasn't expecting. So now on to sharpening. Um, started with the, the flat. Needed to clean that up. There was uh, so much junk on it and oxidation from the uh, uh, from the fire that I had to go to my 200 grit stands stone first to uh, to clean it up. Uh, the the pink is my 800, the red is a fourth uh, is a 1000, and then the white is a 4000 that I continue to, and then finally a, a leather strop. Uh, but once I got the the back to uh, to 4000, I was pretty much happy. I found cleaning up the back of the uh, the router tooth to be rather enjoyable. Um, just a simple process. Now the, the cutting edge was more difficult because it's on the inside of the curve. Um, so you had to use the very edge of the stone. I, I found myself having to flip the stone and uh, in the end using the edge of the stone rather than the face was uh, was very useful. From the 800 on to the 1000, cleaning that up went uh, went fairly smoothly, and then on to the 4000. Once that has all been uh, cleaned up and uh, the way I like, and it's looking somewhat shiny, then I take it over to the leather strop that is loaded with a uh, um, aluminum oxide powder, and once that is nice and mirror reflected. I shaved a few hairs to see how it worked and it did work. So now it's time to actually test it. Uh, make sure that this router works. So I intended to use it to cut out this uh, long mortise and uh, it, it worked. Uh, this is kind of a learning experience because I'm playing with a new tool that I haven't played with before and so I got to experience um, tapping the uh, the blade in and out and uh, what tension would actually hold it in place and what uh, what tension needed a little bit more work. It was very, very fun and, and I'm impressed with how well it worked. It gave me a, a really smooth bottom 
to the uh, the surface. Um, just couldn't be happier. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, everything's done and it's working. I'm really happy with the with how it turned out. Um, cut that groove out pretty quickly and uh, smoothed it out from one end to the other. So it's um, it's a, a router hand plane. The the original cordless router. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. And, uh, I'm gonna be using it a lot. So here we go. Let me know what you'd like in the uh, comments below. Uh, add whatever questions you have or ideas or suggestions that I can improve on. I'll probably be making another one in the future. Maybe one with a little larger, uh, larger base. But uh, that's what we got. So hope you like this. Have a good day.